Central bank is an institution that oversees and regulates the banking system. It controls the monetary base, accepts deposits from and make loans to two main type of agents. The first one is your federal government. So the Bank of Canada is the banker to the government. It accepts deposits of the government and it also makes loans to the government. Our central bank also accepts deposits from chartered banks or commercial banks and also makes loans to them. So it's a banker to the financial system as well. Recall our reserve definition. Reserves were the cash of a chartered bank plus these accounts that they hold at the central bank. Settlement balances are these accounts of financial institution at the central bank. Together, vault cash and settlement balances make up the total reserves of the financial system. Bank of Canada holds these deposits for the financial institution just like a commercial bank holds my deposits for me. Typically, whenever the central bank, in our case Bank of Canada, makes a loan, it will use government securities as collateral. So it is essentially buying government bonds and in exchange for them giving out money to a financial institution. So the biggest asset that the central bank holds is primarily government issued securities. In our case that would be government of Canada bonds. On its liability side our central bank's largest liability is the currency in circulation that is currency held by the public. Now let's look at some of the main functions of a central bank. Bank of Canada is the banker to the commercial banks. It is also referred to as the lender of last resort. If a financial institution cannot borrow money from any other financial institution out there, it can always borrow money from Bank of Canada. Bank of Canada is also the banker to the government. So it holds government deposits and can also give collateralized loans to the government if the government needs some additional liquidity. Bank of Canada is also the agency that issues currency in our economy. So it is the agency that deems Canadian dollar notes as legal tender and is responsible for ensuring that counterfeit notes are not circulating in our financial system. Lastly, Bank of Canada or your central bank is the agency that conducts monetary policy. That is easing or tightening of interest rates, money supply, exchange rates, etc. in order to provide stability to the business cycle. Now, monetary Monetary policy primarily is conducted through manipulation of interest rate and the interest rate that the Bank of Canada targets is called the overnight interest rate. This is the shortest interest rate in our economy and is therefore referred to as the benchmark interest rate of our economy. Bank of Canada when it announces a target for the overnight rate essentially announces an operating band for the overnight interest rate. Overnight interest rate is the interest rate at which financial institutions borrow funds from each other. So if I am TD and I need additional funds in order to manage my liquidity constraints, I can borrow money from another bank in the financial system like BMO, but I will be paying some interest rate to BMO. And that interest rate is determined in this overnight funds market and is referred to as the overnight interest rate. If Bank of Canada targets or controls this particular interest rate, it ends up controlling all other short-term and long-term interest rates in our economy. So when Bank of Canada announces the target, it also announces along with it the upper limit of the operating band and the lower limit of the operating band. The upper limit is typically 25 basis points or 0.25% higher than the operating target. So if the target is 1, the bank rate, the upper limit is 1.25. And along with the bank rate, Bank of Canada also announces the lower limit of the operating band at which it sets its deposit rate. So deposit rate is typically 0.25% or 25 basis points below the target for the overnight rate. So in this case, 1 minus 0.25 would be 0.75. This is the interest rate that Bank of Canada pays to financial institutions which are holding their deposits at Bank of Canada. So just like I could be earning some interest rate at my for my saving account held at TD, financial institutions are earning the deposit rate for holding their accounts at Bank of Canada. Likewise, if a bank needs to borrow money and it ends up borrowing from Bank of Canada, Bank of Canada gives out these loans, also referred to as advances, at the bank rate. Note that the interest rate charged by Bank of Canada for giving out loans is higher than always the overnight interest rate target. This encourages banks to borrow from each other rather than borrow at the higher rate from Bank of Canada. Likewise, Bank of Canada always keeps the deposit rate typically below the target for the overnight rate. By keeping the deposit rate below this target, it is ensuring that banks will not hold on to these deposits and will in fact be encouraged to lend them out to other financial institutions and now earn the higher overnight rate instead of earning the lower deposit rate at Bank of Canada. 
all of these roles of the central bank holding deposits of financial institutions holding deposits of the government holding securities as asset because it uses them as collateral for making loans to financial institutions or to the government we can understand all of these different roles that bank of canada plays by looking at the balance sheet of our central bank so note this is the overall balance sheet of a central bank as of december 2016 we do not need to go over each and every item in this balance sheet however i will go over some of the highlighted points over here balance sheet of the central bank is just like the balance sheet of any other business out there it will have all assets on one side and liabilities and equity on the other hand side so liabilities are again something that the central bank owes and assets are something that the central bank owns notice the biggest asset for our central bank is government of canada bonds whereas on its liability side as i said earlier its biggest liability is the currency in circulation all the dollar notes circulating in our economy are a liability for bank of canada because that is the institution which has termed it legal tender so every paper note issued by bank of canada is backed by the guarantee of bank of canada that it should be acceptable as a means of payment repayment of debt or for paying of your taxes etc notice as i said earlier bank of canada also is the banker to the government so it holds government of canada deposits likewise our commercial banks are holding deposits at the central bank these deposits are also referred to as settlement balances so i'll write sp over here and again because bank of canada is holding these deposits for financial institutions these are now a liability for the central bank now these are the deposits on which the central bank is paying the deposit rate whereas if bank of canada gives out an advance to a financial institution it charges the bank rate now how does bank of canada control the target for the overnight interest rate bank of canada has many different tools at its disposal in order to control the overnight interest rate target some of them are your open market operations advances to financial institutions so loans to other financial institutions or chartered banks and government deposit auctions to keep things simple at the principles of macro level we'll be focusing on open market operations only in order to see how this tool is used by bank of canada or the central bank in order to manipulate the interest rate or control the overnight interest rate so here we have a very simplified version of the bank of canada's balance sheet it's like a balance sheet for any other given business out there we have assets and liabilities we're ignoring all other assets except for our government of canada bonds or treasury bills on my liability side we are in interested in both currency in circulation and bank reserves notice currency and reserves make up the monetary base of our economy and we'll see that bank of canada by conducting an open market operation will change the monetary base so let's look at what an open market operation is open market operation is simply the purchase or sale of assets by the central bank and this particular asset for our purposes would be government of canada bonds or treasury bills so in the first case we're looking at an open market purchase by bank of canada so our central bank is now purchasing securities from a financial institution you can assume the purchase of at least 100 million dollars in this case so as soon as bank of canada purchases securities securities for bank of canada increase by 100 million dollars securities held by bmo fall by 100 million dollars when bmo sold these securities to bank of canada it must have been paid by bank of canada in exchange for these securities so bmo's reserves increase by 100 million dollars now reserves remember are a liability for the central bank currency in circulation and reserves are its monetary liabilities so as soon as you see reserves over here increasing for bmo we must enter them as a liability over here also bank of canada by conducting an open market purchase has increased its monetary liabilities by 100 million dollars now the next step to note over here is how this change in monetary base affects our money supply money supply remember is a multiple of the monetary base and this multiplier depends upon our reserve ratio now for bmo nothing has happened to the deposits if there is no change in deposits over here for our chartered bank all of these reserves are essentially excess reserves for bmo and therefore give out new loans amounting to 100 million dollars therefore we see that again repetition of the multiple deposit creation 
process a new loan translates into a new deposit so this will create a ripple effect in the economy overall we'll see a much bigger deposit expansion so same old formula as before but remember now all of these reserves are excess reserves so assuming again our reserve ratio is of 0.1 that will give you your money multiplier of 10 and 10 times 100 is $1,000 so when Bank of Canada conducts an open market purchase of $100 million it essentially increases the monetary base by the exact same amount on but on our money supply it has a magnified effect and that magnified effect is given by the money multiplier so in this case as deposits are increasing by a thousand overall our money supply is changing by a thousand dollars we can repeat the same process for an open market sale in an open market sale Bank of Canada will be now selling securities and again we can assume them to be hundred million dollars worth of securities sold by Bank of Canada to one of the big banks in our financial system again I can draw the T accounts for both so as it sells securities its securities decrease now by hundred million dollars for BMO securities increase by hundred million dollars now in exchange for these securities Bank of Canada must have received funds or money from BMO so BMO pays hundred million dollars to Bank of Canada so its reserves are going to reduce by hundred million dollars and reserves remember again are liability for Bank of Canada so by conducting an open market sale Bank of Canada has reduced its monetary liabilities by hundred million dollars in conclusion our open market sale of hundred million dollars has reduced reserves by hundred million dollars monetary base remember is currency plus reserves so that tells you our monetary base has been reduced by hundred million dollars so Bank of Canada you can see can directly affect the monetary base in the economy and once it has reduced the monetary base we'll see now again multiple deposit contraction happening in this case we'll write the same formula but now everything is happening in the reverse order there's no change in deposits for BMO so the reserves that have been reduced for BMO must be compensated for by calling back a loan of hundred million dollars so BMO as it calls back loans worth hundred million dollars we'll see it will initiate a deposit contraction process assuming the reserve ratio is again 10 percent that will give you your money multiplier of 10 and overall money supply contracts by 10 times of a hundred or or one thousand dollars so whenever we have an open market sale it will reduce the monetary base by the exact same amount as the worth of those securities but it has a multiplied effect on your money supply and deposits because of the money multiplier and you can see money supply will decrease in this case many times over in this case 10 times of the initial effect of the monetary base Bank of Canada uses these open market operations purchase or sale of securities primarily remember not to overall change the monetary aggregate in our economy but rather to control the overnight trade. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time when we use Bank of Canada's open market operations in the liquidity preference model and see how Bank of Canada through these open market operations maintains the interest rate at its target level.